The year is 1990. And we have just seen a rough cut of the film, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which will go on to be the highest grossing independent movie up to that point. But you know what? We're still going to fix it. Cue the intro. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Mirror Movie Universe podcast. I'm Nate. I'm one half of this shindig, and across the aisle and across the country from me is the other host of this show. Dan, say hello, Dan. I'm Dan, Nate's older brother, wiser, stronger, smarter, not taller, though, weirdly. Yeah, I've got about an inch and a half on him, and he's <laughs> never once uh, uh, lost a, uh, an arm wrestling contest. So he is right about the stronger, but... Uh, the rest, I don't know. We'll let the audience decide. Um, but yeah, we're talking about something that Dan got into in his childhood and then got me into in my childhood. Uh, that's the TMNT movie from 1990, The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And we're going to talk about what we like about it and what we don't like and what we would fix. But it, before we do that, we got to go through what actually happens in the film. So uh, it's 1990, contemporary New York. And a news reporter named April O'Neill is giving a news report about some mysterious thievery that's going on in the city that the police doesn't seem able to address. She thinks that it might be connected to some old clan of ninjas from Japan. And uh, and her investigation uh, goes somewhere with this. She is attacked by some thugs, uh, members of this clan, and at the last second is saved by our four main heroes of the story. Um, they are the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. All you have to know about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is that Leonardo leads and Donatello does machines. Uh, Raphael is cool but rude. And Michelangelo is the party dude. They're also color coordinated with blue, purple, red, and orange masks on their faces. Um, they save April uh, and and uh, she learns of their existence. And Master Splinter, uh, a humanoid rat uh, that is the turtle's uh, mentor, explains kind of his origin story, how he learned ninjutsu from his master Yoshi and then raised these mutant turtles as his own. Um, uh, they go over to April's apartment and have a fun time, but through a young member of the Foot Clan, these evil uh, 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 thievery guys uh, named Danny, uh, Splinter's lair is discovered and the Foot kidnap him and the turtles really freak out. They get ambushed at April's apartment um, and only with the help of a guy named Casey Jones, who Raph met in the park, who's a vig vigilante who really needs to square some stuff in his life. Um, uh, they, they escape to upstate New York. They recuperate there for a bit and come back for a final showdown with the Foot Clan and the Foot Clan's leader, Shredder, who turns out killed Hamato Yoshi, uh, Splinter's uh, uh, master. And uh, uh, in this final showdown, they throw Shredder off the side of a roof into a garbage truck and Casey Jones goes, oops, and kills him. They just kill him, uh, yeah. which is which is just great. Um so yeah, uh, that's that's more or less the plot of TMNT 1990. There's a bunch of little uh, uh, subtleties that I've left out. There's kind of like a budding romance between April and Casey, and um, a couple of other you know inter um, inter character spats going on. Like Raph is very upset, and Leo's trying to calm him down most of the film. But that's basically what happens. Uh, Dan, out of all of that, what do you like about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the movie from 1990? uh everything no um it's a great movie it really is i think so up until this point there are really two incarnations of teenage mutant ninja turtles there are the comics that mm -hmm. come out and uh, they, they came first that's what everything is kind of based on and then there's the cartoon that you kind of alluded to with the best opening theme song ever of all time yeah and those two versions of the turtles are about as different as you can get the comics yeah. are dark. They're black and white. They're gritty. They're violent. And then the cartoon is colorful, silly, fun, slapstick, mm -hmm. just zany and bonkers. And I think this movie does a really, really good job of marrying the two. Mm -hmm. um, really good middle ground between them. It still gets a PG rating, even though it is really kind of dark. You see tortured uh, or splinter tortured and kidnapped. You see them mm -hmm. fight with shredder and like you said at the end of it they kill him they throw him into this dump truck and he's crushed to death 
Um, mm-hmm. But the turtles are also fun and they play around and they have those silly antics. Pizza dude's got 30 seconds. Like there are those great turtles mm-hmm. moments in it. Brought to you by Domino's. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like it's so well balanced. Um, the other big shout out that I have to give to this movie um, all the actors are great in it. Uh, not a bad one in the bunch, uh, but the standout is the Jim Henson company because these turtles look mm. amazing. Yeah, This is the most advanced puppetry that's been done to date. It's not an animatronic. It's not just open, close, open, close, yeah. open, close. Like you can see them emote. You can see happy and anger and and uh, sadness and all sorts of 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 stuff when they talk Mm -hmm. and and uh and you see their expressions on their face so hugely well like great job when puppetry is well done Mm -hmm. like you don't think of them as puppets you think of them as characters yeah and not once do i ever think of them as a puppet i I know it's just that's leonardo that's donatello you know Mm -hmm. throughout the entire thing uh, yeah, and, and, and the fact that they are able to like jump around and fight in the same oh suits gosh. that they can have like close up shots of 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 dialogue and emotion with, I mean, just it's out of everything the Jim Henson Company's done, like you said, like this one is not as 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 highly rated as as it should be. Everyone talks about like the Dark Crystal and Labyrinth and stuff, and like this is great. It's great stuff. Yeah, yeah, and and hats off to the stunt performers too who did those moves. Mm-hmm. Like, there's no CGI. There's no wires or anything. Like, they do mm-hmm. the flips and the and the fighting and everything. Like, mm-hmm. the stunt team on this is phenomenal. Uh, yeah, I, I love the plot. Love that like the shredder is menacing and and um, April is great. Casey Jones. I mean, what more could you ask for? This is a, what a turtles movie should be. Mm-hmm. um all right what do you what do you like about it i i love mostly i i i don't think it strikes as good of a balance as you say it strikes uh i think it's really really dark and i love that um i i i love all to all of the links that they go like i mentioned they just they freaking kill shredder at the end he uh-huh. just off to the side of a building, does a half gainer into a garbage truck, and then Casey just goes, "Oops!" and they they just kill him, uh-huh. uh, which is great. I love that because in the first run of the comics by Eastman and Laird, they just kill him, um, and and they 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 give a more than a few little nods to them. The there's there's one of like the 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 foot thugs who's not like a full on ninja but is just a, a a guy he's just like a teenager at the end he tells a cop to check out the east warehouse or the eastman warehouse on Laird Island mm-hmm. and that's it's the names of the guys who wrote the comics which is great that guy the actor that does that by the way is Sam Rockwell who has been in like he grew up and and be, did a whole bunch of stuff he's oh he's like, too. like he's, an amazing um, actor yeah yeah um yeah which is which is great um but really i i really like the supporting cast of humans i mean you talked about the casting and actors and everyone's great i i think the best of them is casey um the actor that plays him is great he's done a whole bunch of dramatic stuff he's in a really good world war ii movie called the thin red line like he's just awesome um but just the way those characters are written too because it's it's a completely out there story based on a wacky cartoon where they shoot pizzas out of a machine gun on the top of a truck. Yeah. And um uh they keep the story grounded really, really well through people who you believe are real, like the troubled youth named Danny, who um is is kind of the audience's introduction and the foot clan's introduction to the turtles, other than April. He feels like a real character who's been swept up in in some you know bad stuff with the foot ninja and, and all of this kind of stuff. Um, he feels like a like a legitimately just angsty young man, and the rest of the supporting cast of humans feel real, and it's it's great. Um, you don't expect that kind of character realism out of a film like this, but it does it really really well. All of the people around the turtles feel normal. And the turtles being ninja, you know, turtles and all of this also feels normal uh, yeah. because of that. And it it just, it's like, yeah, this could happen in 1990 New York. Why not? And I love that. Yeah. I really do. 
it's, I, it's, I want to say another um, shout out to all of these movies, actually, to all, all three mm-hmm. of the original Turtles live actions. It's not an, a world ending event. It's not even a New <laughs> York ending event. Like they yeah. don't shoot, fight a giant sky beam, right? It's yeah. very grounded. It's like, oh, there's some bad guys. We're going to go fight them. That's it. And that's what it should be. Like, I don't, I don't want them to take on some giant, like, let's save the world thing. The turtles are, you know, I hear the word like, or the, the term like street level heroes and they, yeah really stick to that here like yeah. it's just a gang it's just a gang and they fight the gang and they win and that's yeah. what it should be yeah um the gang gets more ridiculous in the second film but yeah. but uh that's not my favorite one this one is my favorite of the three i like it a lot um mm-hmm. but i don't like everything about it and i don't think you do either so yeah. what i mean it's this show what are you going to fix about team nt 1990 what am I going to fix? A perfect Turtles movie. All right. Let me let me tee up my fix here. You know mm-hmm. how much I love doing that. Um, mm-hmm. When I was in high school, we had uh, one day a year when it was movie day. And they would let everybody. You too? Surprise day. Yeah. We went Surprise to the day. high school many yeah. years apart. But they bring you into the gym. They show a movie. Yes. And the police, you know, have drug dogs go through the school and, and sniff out, you know, all the, when all the students are gathered away from their lockers. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. 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 Yeah, did you watch I, this on Surprise Day? We watched That's... this on one of the surprise. I gunned to my head, no idea what the other three ones were, but I remember watching this one. Oh, man, such a fun movie! I was mm-hmm. so excited for it, and there were two big moments in it that got a rise out of the crowd because it's a bunch of high yeah. school kids. Like yeah. some were sleeping, talking, some were watching, whatever. Um, two moments that got a rise out of everybody. One is when Raph is on the roof and he's cussing, which really. Mm-hmm pushes that pg rating as far as it can go and everybody yeah. goes, Ooh. but the other one is when splinter is talking about the origin of the turtles which is a mm-hmm. surprisingly long scene it's like five yeah. minutes long it's a good chunk of exposition because he's just talking to april he's like and this happened and this happened yeah yeah and it does a flashback to the like baby turtles mm-hmm. and everybody laughs because as much as i love the puppetry Mm-hmm. That moment when that little like puppet turtle goes, meow, meow, yeah, is it's so not great. Ridiculous. It's not great. No, it's so rid- and it's so it's so out of place in in mm-hmm. comparison to everything else that's happening. So my fix is actually really easy. Mm-hmm. Cut that out. Okay. Just have Splinter be talking about it. I it it's so jarring because it goes from Splinter to mm-hmm. seeing like real turtles crawl through green slime back to splinter to the weird uh puppet turtle which by the way it's i'm sure that it's just a hand puppet doing this but it doesn't yeah. need to be you don't need it to be this small you can make it whatever size you want and it just looks ridiculous and out of place yeah. then mm-hmm. back to splinter i mean just i mean it's it's unnecessary and it mm-hmm. does a it does a disservice to the puppetry and i i gave a ton of props to the puppetry up front and i think that this kind of takes away from it which is one of the reasons why i want it out because yeah. the puppetry is amazing here and i think that people are like mm, it doesn't doesn't yeah. back up my point so that's what yeah. do you what do you think well, I did not view this through the lens of of seeing it in high school. Obviously, you saw this when you were a little kid. Yeah. Um, and and I saw this when I was a little kid. I saw it second. Um, I saw uh, Secret of the Use first. We'll talk about that oh, in another yeah. episode. Uh, but this this was the first one I saw, and I was really disappointed um, that uh, Michelangelo, who's my favorite turtle as a kid, I was wrong, does not really get anything to do. Or or grow or anything or or he, he, they don't really do much with his character. He didn't really didn't really have a moment. And I I was researching this, and they had quite a bit set out and planned for him. And and you there's there's chunks of it still left in the film. There's a bit in the beginning when they're waiting for the pizza guy. Splinter is just giving them a, a speech about how he might not be around ever mm-hmm. uh, for forever. And Donatello is like, Hey, Mikey, ever think about what Master Splinter said about you know how you know uh, he might not be around and mikey just looks up into this and he's like nope and and he doesn't he do, he just doesn't process it at all right um later in the movie when they're all when splinter's been captured and they're all on, on the farm that april has in upstate new york 
Um, they're all dealing with their grief in different ways. And I'll have to watch the film again, but I'm pretty sure because they have a, a sequence with each turtle. They don't have one with Mike, I think, or they reshot it. I don't remember. Um, and what originally the plan was, was he was going to be because he didn't think of, of it at all at the beginning of the movie and he didn't heed Splinter's words. He was going to have a real bad time with that. Uh, and there's a, a scene where there, one of the turtles is on top of the um, on top of the barn and it's like late at night and he just yells splinter. Uh, my fix is really easy. Uh, it's just uh, bringing back the original voice actor for that because that was originally Michelangelo. Oh, wow. And they, it was shot with Michelangelo and it's set. It's Raph's voice. But if you look real close, it's dark, but if you look real close, he's got the nunchucks and he looks like Michelangelo. And um, uh, just, just having that character process that and, and grow and change would make this movie a plus perfect for me. I I I love it already, but that's the only thing I'd change. I'd just have Michelangelo. No, I think um, so. Here's I think it's so funny that you say Michelangelo was your favorite. Donatello was my favorite. Well, that's uh, the right I'm, answer now. Even yeah. though I'm wearing blue, um, I've I've, but, I've got Donatello's socks on, but I'm not going to contort myself to get them in front of the camera. Um, <laughs> But yeah. I do I do think like Leonardo and Raphael, as far as characters go, get the most to do out of the turtles. You see mm-hmm. Raphael lose it. I mean, he's he's yeah. kind of the loose cannon, he's going off, and Leonardo's the one kind of leading the whole spirit mm-hmm. um astral projection thing and trying yep. to keep his brothers together and stuff. So like those two, mm-hmm. I think, really do get the most character development out of the turtles. You see Leonardo lead. You see Raphael be kind of the the cool but rude, the loose cannon thing. Mm-hmm. I don't think that you get um, much from Donatello actually, as far as like doing machines. Mm-hmm. I think you do get Michelangelo being fun and silly and yeah. whatever, kind of screwing around doing the skateboarding. But I I get where you're coming from. Like you you want to see a little bit more growth from him. Yeah. And and it it's only I wouldn't have even thought of it if I didn't know that they had already shot it. Like yeah. it's like there's still images of them shooting the scene out there. It's just never been unearthed, I guess. But yeah, just like take that, put it back in. I love it. Great. Make the film darker. Traumatize as many children as you can. Um, because yeah, I mean, it was it was a shock when this film debuted because a, a bunch of kids went and saw it. Uh-huh. Uh, and and um you know, it was very much not like the cartoon. Yeah. yeah. And it's weird too, because at the beginning they used the same logo from the cartoon, like that very cartoony, like comes out of the sewer or whatever. And it's just like, Oh, that's an odd choice. Like Mm -hmm. you maybe want to do something different there. I don't know. Um, Oh my God. That's great. Yeah. But that's that's our fixes. What do you think, audience? What would you what would you fix? And if you could only choose one, which one would you choose between the two of us? Let us know in the in the comments down in the doobly doo or whatever. Yeah, like, comment, subscribe, all the good stuff. And um, man, these were a little bit uh, nitpicky, but you know what? When you have a great film, that's what you have to do to fix yeah. it. So, all right, thanks all right. for watching, listening, and all that, everybody. See you next time. <laughs>